Hello and welcome back. This is the final part of the tutorial where we are going to animate this character and then we're going to import everything that we have into Unity. So let's just begin. First things first, we're gonna go to the animations window. Before we do anything else, we're just going to set up this animation sheet properly. We're gonna have a dope sheet and then just select the action editor in here. Then we're gonna get this layout, select all the bones in here. Just make sure that you are in the pose mode we're going to create a new action and we're going to call it idle and we're going to click on this shield icon to protect this animation do that is because if you're gonna close this project there's a high chance that most of your animations will not be saved so that's why that shield icon is very important you will see that the F letter will appear in the in the front of it don't worry it doesn't affect the name itself just showing that this animation is saved okay so we're gonna start with the zero frame animation and then and we're going to click this circle icon over here which will be recording every single movement of the bones toggle this on and just leave it on for the rest of the animation before we start just double check if all the bones are attached properly if so we're gonna select all bones in here and then we're gonna press I while having the cursor in this screen over here press I and it will create animation keyframes depending on where your bones are located and then we're just going to move this frame to zero because we need to start from the zero and we're going to start animating this character bend the knees more to the side a little bit outward because it's a male character using 7 1 and 3 I can just rotate the view wherever I need to we can set this part to animated character move the leg here then rotate inwards this leg backwards lower the character lower it like that so the knees would bend slightly forward push this knee more to the side rotate the arms just move them around at this point it's up to you what you want to do move both positions like that gonna rotate the hip bone a little bit like this you can move the foot a little bit more back the way the cape is done is it has to only go back and forth from the torso positioning so what we're gonna do is just select bone we're going to use the transform settings manually because once you're gonna rotate the body for example to the side we can't really use the side view to rotate the cape because it's just gonna disconnect use these rotations in here no matter where the torso will be rotated, the cape will be moving properly. This is how we're gonna control the cape bone. So this is going to be the first frame of the animation. Make sure to keep the feet on the ground and we're going to slightly move the cape away from the torso. So we're gonna just add like 0.1. We have to minus it to go away from the torso like this. Most of the idle animations is breathing states, so we can just have that generic idle animation. It's more combat ready idle. So we're gonna select the 20th frame, do the same thing, but just different position. The character moves, everything is animated. At this point, it's experiment with all these animations and basically play around, see what works for you, torso a bit rotate forward make the character always face forward and once you complete the second frame select all bones press I to get all the key points set and then in this keyframe area we're gonna select the first frame at the very top button so we could have all of them selected like this press ctrl C ctrl V over here and then we're gonna have a looping animation if you don't like the speed of this animation you can just simply increase it by selecting the first animation frame select all frames by pressing A and then we're just gonna S to scale the animation if you want to basically extend it make it loop we're just gonna set this on 79 remove the last frame this is what animation will look like simple breathing character idling has a very aggressive stance if you want to have extras you can animate the cape a little bit more the 10th frame we can just set it to 25 this will make the animation feel a little bit more natural and then but that's if the character goes down then we're gonna push this closer to the player and that's pretty much it for the idle animation. So as you can see, it's very easy, nothing too advanced. 
it works pretty well. The more body parts move, the better. That's the way the character starts feeling more and more alive. All right, so that's the first animation done. Then we're going to create the moving animation. But from this point, it's up to you what you want to do. So I'm just going to give you idle animation and just simple movement. So next, what we're going to do is just copy this idle frame and we're just going to rename it to movement. And then we're going to have two animations in here. Delete all frames except the first one, box selecting these top frames, select them and delete them. Default pose of the animation. This leg will be touching the ground and this leg will be lifted, Z axis and lifted, then rotated. Then for movement, I just like to keep the knees just somewhere like, like that. Then we're going to lower the body part just a little bit somewhere around here. Yeah. And then since the character is moving, it will have to be leaning forward. Three increments and then rotate the head back. This leg is going forward. Push this arm a little bit forward as well. All your arms and legs go opposite ways. Move this cape out. Once we're gonna get animations down the leg positioning, then we're gonna start moving up the body. Then edit extra features later on. Also, don't forget to move the legs a little bit outwards, move the knees out more, and then we're going to select another frame, push this leg forward, push this back backwards like this, and we're going to lower the body. And then at this point, this is where the impact will happen, the 20th frame, and we're going to lower the body even more so the leg could have a proper contact. To have the proper ground contact, we're just going to reset the positioning and then move it forward like this. And this leg should be in the air like this and it will going to return. This is where the cool trick comes in. Back to all animation frames, select just the first animation frame, control C and then on 30th we're gonna press control shift V. It mirrors animation or it just basically places everything in reversed method. And then we can just do the same thing with these keys, so just control C Control shift V, control C, and then control shift V. And then the very last frame, take the first frame, control C, and then control V. That will return to the original state. And as you can see, that's what the loop looks like at the moment. What we're going to do now is rescale the animation till 20 frames, set on 19, and then the character will be moving a lot quicker. First, we'll always start with the legs just to get the proper loop going. Now we just need to add impact. So on the fifth frame, we're going to make the leg touch the ground in between the lift up and then touch down so it will have more impact control C and control shift V and there we go we're gonna have more impactful steps and then we are going to push these legs a bit more out because at the moment it looks like the character is sliding lift these legs a little bit outwards and then control C and then control shift V and of course we can over exaggerate the animations a little bit by moving the legs a lot higher so basically just test around, see what frames work fine. It is recommended for beginners to follow some kind of an animation frame sheet. So the problem with that is when the foot lands, it stays a bit too long on the ground. Move this leg forward like this, then move this leg back like that. Control C, Control V. And from this part, the leg should be a little bit out in the air. And there you go. Now it looks like it's actually running. When the character hits the ground with the leg, in the next few frames, the character should move downwards a little bit more. The running feels more impactful. When the character is not touching any ground, move the character slightly up. Now as you can see, the character feels like it's running. Move up to the body. Start setting the pelvis. When the legs are up, pelvis should be rotated to the position of the legs. And then just from the side view, angle it a little bit like this. Control C, Control V. There we go. Now the pelvis is moving, though a little bit too aggressive. Re-rotate it. Pelvis is now animated into the leg motion as well. Now the body. When the character is standing the most upwards, reset the back position. And when the impact happens, character will lean forward a little bit. Control Shift V. 
control V. Now it has even more impact, but what we need to do now is to rotate the thing. So now we're gonna need to rotate the torso a little bit to the sides. The straight pose, keep it straight. It starts moving forward. Torso will rotate slightly in opposite way. One increment, then do two increments. And just like that, we're gonna have movement. Make sure that the torso is straightened and the head is facing forward. And once we're done with the body, we're gonna finalize the arms because they are very important as well. So this arm will go backwards, other arm will go forward quite a lot, and then just make it look natural. This frame, then arm completely back like this. This arm will be in front of the character. Just see if it looks natural. Animate one side and we can just clone to the other side. And there you go. We have a running character. Hands should be rotated opposite way of its movement. And once it hits this frame, rotate it like that. So it has more swaying. And we need to fix the elbow positioning. Whole animation seems a little bit more natural, but we can still push the arms a little bit more forward like that. Copy, paste. There we go. On the impacts again, slight head bob, just one increment on only this part. And as final touch, set this cape. Since it's a solid object, it won't gonna look that nice. So it can be a little bit more randomized. But it works. And that's the very basic way of animating the running. The animation part is where your input is what matters the most. I'm just showing the general inputs and bindings that can be quite useful. So now I'm just going to quickly create another animation that I need myself. This is just a basic magic cast spell animation. Very basic. Once you are ready with all your animations, we're going to create a new window just by clicking on this corner here and dragging it down. We're gonna create this window. Click on this corner corner over here, go to non-linear animations and in here we're gonna delete everything we have in here. Down here we're going to select first idle animation and then in here we're gonna click this button to set this animation applied in here. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the rest of them, so just select any other animation click import in here movement idle attack just select it and just import it so once you're gonna have all your animations set in here go to the object mode press a to select everything then shift select armature and then we're going to click file and export and we're going to export as fbx file and then we're just going to export it in the same place where we exported every other parts of the character but before export limit to selected objects only we're gonna set forward to Z Y as up we're gonna apply all the scales have all these selected and then in animations just unselect the all actions because we're going to export these strips that we have set up down here and we're going to click export we're gonna hit the unity project so here we are in unity project find your exported folder find this model right here if you remember we exported every single part for this project we don't need them anymore so all you can do is just delete all of them just keep the material before we start messing with the model select every single UV map set the texture type to sprite 2d set this to whatever scale you're using mine is 25 then we're gonna set to no points filter mode and compression to none just to have all these textures as sharp as possible and of course if you're working in 3d project just make sure that you have all 2d assets installed in your project so now we have the model which is going to set the material creation mode to none and apply just set the material creation mode on none because we have exported them ourselves and this is what the character will look like you can just pretty much drag this prefab onto the scene and there we go we have a character that is matching the correct pixel size but as you can see the character has no textures that's because we're gonna have to apply them manually create a new material just rename the material to body part and mat so the materials will be underneath correct body part in material set the smoothness to zero drag this texture onto albedo and the material will be attached and then you can just drag this material onto the character and as you can see everything will work fine Everything is perfect. Everything is pixel perfect, which is good. And now we're just going to do the same thing for every single body part that we have. So 
So there you have it, the model is implemented and now just to test it out we're just going to slap animator on top of it, just on the model itself, animation folder just create new folder go back to this model select these animations press ctrl c and then in animator folder ctrl v that's how you're going to extract all these animations from the model itself create an animator controller we're going to attach this animator onto the controller itself just place the scene animator here add these animations in here and i'm just going to set this as default for now but the reason why we need to copy these animations is because we will be able to customize them we can add events because inside the model animations we're not allowed to animate anything see it says read only copy these animations from the model into the separate folder and then you can just have full control over the animations and you can edit them inside unity to set these animations to loop and if i'll just play it this character should move and there you go and from that point on, it's really up to you what you want to do with it. And there you have it. This is how you implement the voxel character from Magicka Voxel to Blender and then to Unity. As you can see, it takes quite a bit of a steps, but the results are pretty solid. However, as you can see, the colors look quite washed out at the moment. However, there's a very, very easy fix that you can do. Go to your lighting settings which you should have it over here all you have to do is just set uh, skybox on color and then just set it on white and then set this this area skybox to custom and all your assets will then look very sharp and pixel perfect and the rest you can just play around and see what works best for you and of course this is what your whole game will look like once you use this very basic lighting system but as you can see everything is bright everything looks the way it should be i just prefer to have all these colors so there you have it so from this point it's up to you what you're going to do with your characters i'm just showing you how to fix these models animate them and import them into the game project so as you can see it is quite tedious work but i can say that it's pretty rewarding you don't really need to do any uv unwrapping objects if you have any requests or any questions just drop questions in the comments down below i hope that these tutorials helped you in some formal way thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next videos.